Camera animation in Blender is slow and fiddly, requiring curves, constraints, or just countless keyframes. So I built a free add-on that fixes this. Record your camera movement like playing a video game, extract its path, and then instantly generate a rig. This turns hours of frustrating camera setup into a few effortless clicks. The first release already helped over 100,000 artists, so I returned with a new and improved version. Let me show you how it works. In the first release video, I orbited a character using AutoCam and briefly showed you a scene. This time, let's use this beautiful museum scan from Sketchfab. It's perfect for a cinematic fly-through and it'll show you what AutoCam 2.0 does in a real space. Installing is simple. Blender 4.2 Plus via extensions, 4.0 4.1 via add-ons. To get started, let's add a camera to the scene. Press N in the 3D view and open the AutoCam tab. The new header is context aware. It tells you what you've selected or prompts you to do so. I'll just click on my camera here and you'll see the label update. If your camera doesn't have any animation yet, start with record. Click on start recording and fly like a game with WASD, QE and your mouse. When you're done, press the escape button twice to confirm the keyframes and then you can play the timeline to preview it. Now for the fun part, camera path extraction. With the animated camera selected, click generate curve. AutoCam builds a curve from your camera movements. In path settings, you can pick your preferred type, use tolerance to simplify, and if you edit the path in edit mode, click on the apply button while you're still in edit mode to commit those edits. You can always revert if needed. We've got a clean path now, but the camera is still using its old keys. Select the path and click generate rig. AutoCam now builds a rig that follows the curve perfectly. A dolly that travels, an aim object that carries the camera, a look at object you can move to steer the camera, and a focus point for depth of field. Everything already linked up. By default, the rig mode is dynamic and the tracking mode is manual aim. Both are new in 2.0 and they make a huge difference. Simple mode is a classic approach from the first release. Under the hood, it uses a follow path constraint on the dolly. If you want a constant camera speed, just set one speed value here and it just works. You can also set the start and end keyframes yourself and then use the sync speed to keys button to update the speed value to reflect the changes. The trade-off in the simple mode is that changing the speed mid-shot can introduce jitters because of how the follow path constraint works. It is possible to keyframe the offset factor directly for speed control, but it takes more manual work. Dynamic mode, on the other hand, evaluates speed every frame, so you can ramp, hold at zero, or reverse with negative values. The trade-off here is precision. It won't automatically land on an exact end frame unless you key it that way. So when you're happy with the move, you'd usually bake before the final render or export, and we'll talk about that soon as well. Manual aim is the default tracking mode because it's reliable and flexible. Move the look at object to steer where the camera points. The focus point follows it by default, so your depth of field stays locked onto your subject. If you want a rack focus, keyframe the focus point separately and pull the focus between details. If your camera rotations from the original recording already feels right, switch the tracking mode to match recording to reuse them on the rig. You will lose the look at control in this mode, and if your new camera speed differs from the original take, the rotation can drift out of sync. Fix it by using simplify and smoothing to reduce the keys, and then reposition those keys to match your new speed. If the original pass had multiple speed changes before conversion, consider animating the rig speed to match that original pacing instead. Here's the rule of thumb. Use AutoCam early in your camera workflow. Record, extract the path, and generate the rig before you start refining. I'm also building an advanced version called AutoCam Pro for heavier production workflows. It focuses on smarter pacing match, automated look at, looping shots, and multi-target tracking. If that sounds useful for your workflow, there's a waitlist link below that will give you your unique 25% discount at launch. Okay, now there's a new bake panel in 2.0 which lets you convert your AutoCam rig one-to-one -one into a standard Blender camera with plain keyframes. That makes it safe to export to other software or to send your scene to another PC or render farm before the final render without any dependencies. You can open the bake settings by clicking the gear icon next to the bake button. Here, you can choose the frame range, use curve to bake just the pass, scene to use your timeline range, or set a custom start and end. The step value controls the sampling. Use one for finals. A higher value means it'll skip keys and simplify the whole range. For depth of field, pick what you want to carry over. Choose keyframes to bake the focus distance values, making it the most export safe. Focus object to keep the focus point object still driving the depth of field distance off to disable depth of field on new baked camera. 
You can also tell AutoCam to set it as the active camera after baking and add a name suffix like underscore baked so it's easier to find in the outliner. So, when should you really consider baking? Always bake if you use dynamic mode or animated speed ramps, this locks the exact timing for renders and exports. In simple mode, you can often render without baking, but baking is still the safest handoff for teams and farms. Baking using AutoCam is non-destructive in the sense that you get a brand new camera with plain keyframes and the original rig stays in the original collection. To go back, just hide or delete the bake collection and re-enable the rigs collection. Here's what a museum fly-through is looking like at the moment. This was just about 10 minutes of effort using AutoCam, which would have otherwise taken a few hours to achieve by hand. AutoCam also plays nicely with popular camera add-ons like LensSim and Camera Shakeify. Since the camera object at the end of the rig hierarchy isn't touched significantly by AutoCam, it should work directly. In case it doesn't, the safest workflow is still to bake first and then apply the lens effects or shake to the baked camera. Here's the same fly-through with a touch of handheld wobble and it already feels more like real footage. Dedicated AutoCam guides are coming soon for different practical use cases in real projects and if you have a guide you'd like to share, read the instructions in the description and I'll credit you for your submission. Huge thanks to everyone who has donated and supported the project. Every little donation directly funds the development and I've made sure the free version always includes the core features you need so it never feels limited and it'll continue to receive updates forever. If you want the advanced tools I mentioned, join the AutoCam Pro waitlist for 25% off at launch. AutoCam 2.0 is free. You can find the download links and documentation below. If this add-on becomes a part of your workflow, I'd love to see what you create.